Genealogy. Genealogy, from from comma generation and common knowledge, also known as family history, is the study of families and the tracing of their lineages and history. Genealogists use oral interviews, historical records, genetic analysis, and other records to obtain information about a family and to demonstrate kinship and pedigrees of its members. The results are often displayed in charts or written as narratives. The pursuit of family history and origins tends to be shaped by several motives, including the desire to carve out a place for one's family in the larger historical picture, a sense of responsibility to preserve the past for future generations, and a sense of self-satisfaction in accurate storytelling. Amateur genealogists typically pursue their own ancestry and that of their spouses. Professional genealogists may also conduct research for others, publish books on genealogical methods, teach, or produce their own databases. They may work for companies that provide software or produce materials off use to other professionals and to amateurs. Both try to understand not just where and when people lived, but also their lifestyles, biographies, and motivations. This often requires, or leads to, knowledge of antiquated laws, old political boundaries, migration trends, and historical socioeconomic or religious conditions. Genealogists sometimes specialize in a particular group, for example a Scottish clan, a particular surname, such as in a one-name study, a small community, for example a single village or parish, such as in a one-place study, or a particular, often famous, person. Bloodlines of Salem is an example of a specialized family history group. It welcomes members who can prove descent from a participant of the Salem witch trials or who simply choose to support the group. Genealogists and family historians often join family history societies, where novices can learn from more experienced researchers. Such societies generally serve a specific geographical area. Their members may also index records to make them more accessible, and engage in advocacy and other efforts to preserve public records and cemeteries. Some schools engage students in such projects as a means to reinforce lessons regarding immigration and history. Other benefits include family medical histories with families with serious medical conditions that are hereditary. The terms genealogy and family history are often used synonymously, but some offer a slight difference in definition. The Society of Genealogists, while also using the terms interchangeably, describes genealogy as the establishment of a pedigree by extracting evidence, from valid sources, of how one generation is connected to the next and family history is a biographical study of a genealogically proven family and of the community and country in which they lived. The term family history may be more popular in Europe, genealogy more popular in the United States. In communitarian societies, one's identity is defined as much by one's kin network as by individual achievement, and the question who are you? would be answered by a description of father, mother, and tribe. New Zealand Māori, for example, learn wakapapa, genealogies, to discover who they are. Family history plays a part in the practice of some religious belief systems. For example, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS Church, has a doctrine of baptism for the dead, which necessitates that members of that faith engage in family history research. In societies such as Australia or the United States, there was by the 20th century growing pride in the pioneers and nation builders. Establishing descent from these was, and is, important to such groups as the Daughters of the American Revolution. Modern family history explores new sources of status, such as celebrating the resilience of families that survived generations of poverty or slavery, or the success of families in integrating across racial or national boundaries. Some family histories even emphasize links to celebrity criminals, such as the Bush Ranger Ned Kelly in Australia. The growing interest in family history in the media coupled with easier access to online records has allowed those who are curious to do so to start investigating their ancestry. This curiosity can be particularly strong among those whose family histories were lost or unknown due to, for example, adoption or separation from family, perhaps as a result of bereavement. Historically. In Western societies the focus of genealogy was on the kinship and descent of rulers and nobles, often arguing or demonstrating the legitimacy of claims to wealth and power. The term often overlapped with heraldry, in which the ancestry of royalty was reflected in their coats of arms. Modern scholars consider many claimed noble ancestries to be fabrications, such as the Anglo-Saxon chronicle that traced the ancestry of several English kings till the Godwoden. Some family trees have been maintained for considerable periods. 
The family tree of Confucius has been maintained for over 2,500 years and is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest extant family tree. The fifth edition of the Confucius Genealogy was printed in 2009 by the Confucius Genealogy Compilation Committee, CGCC. In modern times, genealogy became more widespread, with commoners as well as nobility researching and maintaining their family trees. Genealogy received a boost in the late 1970s with the television broadcast of Alex Haley's account of his family line. With the advent of the Internet, the number of resources readily accessible to genealogists has vastly increased, resulting in an explosion of interest in the topic. According to some sources, genealogy is one of the most popular topics on the Internet. The Internet has become not only a major source of data for genealogists, but also of education and communication. In India, Karens are the bards who traditionally keep the written genealogy records of various castes. Some notable places where traditional genealogy records are kept include, Hindu genealogy registers at Haridwar, Uttarakhand, Varanasi and Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh, Kurukshetra, Haryana, Trimbakeshwar, Maharashtra, and Chintpurni, Himachal Pradesh. Genealogical research in the United States was first systematized in the early 19th century, especially by John Farmer, 1789-1838. Before farmers' efforts, tracing one's genealogy was seen as an attempt by colonists to secure a measure of social standing within the British Empire, a name that was counter to the New Republic's egalitarian, future-oriented ethos. As Fourth of July celebrations commemorating the Founding Fathers and the heroes of the Revolutionary War became increasingly popular, however, the pursuit of antiquarianism, which focused on local history, became acceptable as a way to honor the achievements of early Americans. Farmer capitalized on the acceptability of antiquarianism to frame genealogy within the early republic's ideological framework of pride in one's American ancestors. He corresponded with other antiquarians in New England, where antiquarianism and genealogy were well established, and became a coordinator, booster, and contributor to the growing movement. In the 1820s, he and fellow antiquarians began to produce genealogical and antiquarian tracts in earnest, slowly gaining a devoted audience among the American people. Though Farmer died in 1839, his efforts led to the creation of the New England Historic Genealogical Society, NICS, one of New England's oldest and most prominent organizations dedicated to the preservation of public records. NICS publishes the New England Historical and Genealogical Register. The Genealogical Society of Utah, founded in 1894, later became the Family History Department of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS. The department's research facility, the Family History Library, which has developed the most extensive genealogical record-gathering program in the world, was established to assist in tracing family lineages for special religious ceremonies which LDS adherents believe will seal family units together for eternity. LDS members believe that this fulfilled a biblical prophecy stating that the prophet Elijah would return to turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. There is a network of LDS family history centers all over the country and around the world, where volunteers assist the public with tracing their ancestors. Brigham Young University offers bachelor's degree, minor, and concentration programs in family history, and is the only school in North America to offer this. The American Society of Genealogists is the scholarly honorary society of the U.S. genealogical field. Founded by John Inslee Coddington, Arthur Adams, and Meredith B. Colcott, Jr., in December 1940, its membership is limited to 50 living fellows. ASG publishes The Genealogist, a scholarly journal of genealogical research semi-annually since 1980. Fellow of the American Society of Genealogists, who bear the postnominal acronym FASC, have written some of the most notable genealogical materials of the last half century. Some of the most notable scholarly American genealogical journals are the American Genealogist, National Genealogical Society Quarterly, the New England Historical and Genealogical Register, the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record, and the Genealogist. Genealogical research is a complex process that uses historical records and sometimes genetic analysis to demonstrate kinship. Reliable conclusions are based on the quality of sources, ideally original records, the information within those sources, ideally primary or first hand information, and the evidence that can be drawn, directly or indirectly, from that information. 
In many instances, genealogists must skillfully assemble indirect or circumstantial evidence to build a case for identity and kinship. All evidence and conclusions, together with the documentation that supports them, is then assembled to create a cohesive genealogy or family history. Genealogists begin their research by collecting family documents and stories. This creates a foundation for documentary research, which involves examining and evaluating historical records for evidence about ancestors and other relatives, their kinship ties, and the events that occurred in their lives. As a rule, genealogists begin with the present and work backward in time. Historical, social, and family context is essential to achieving correct identification of individuals and relationships. Source citation is also important when conducting genealogical research. To keep track of collected material, family group sheets and pedigree charts are used. Formerly handwritten, these can now be generated by genealogical software. Because a person's DNA contains information that has been passed down relatively unchanged from early ancestors, analysis of DNA is sometimes used for genealogical research. Three DNA types are of particular interest, mitochondrial DNA that we all possess and that is passed down with only minor mutations through the matrilineal, direct female, line, the Y chromosome, present only in males, which is passed down with only minor mutations through the patrilineal direct male, line, and the autosomal DNA, which is found in the 22 non-gender specific chromosomes, autosomes, inherited from both parents, which can uncover relatives from any branch of the family. A genealogical DNA test allows two individuals to find the probability that they are, or are not, related within an estimated number of generations. Individual genetic test results are collected in databases to match people descended from a relatively recent common ancestor. See, for example, the Molecular Genealogy Research Project. These tests are limited to either the patrilineal or the matrilineal line. Most genealogy software programs can export information about persons and their relationships in a standardized format called GetCom. In that format, it can be shared with other genealogists, added to databases, or converted into family websites. Social Networking Service (SNS) websites allow genealogists to share data and build their family trees online. Members can upload their family trees and contact other family historians to fill in gaps in their research. In addition to the SNS websites, there are other resources that encourage genealogists to connect and share information such as http colon slash slash www.rootsweb.ancestry.com slash and http colon slash slash rsl.rootsweb.ancestry.com slash volunteer efforts figure prominently in genealogy. These range from the extremely informal to the highly organized. On the informal side are the many popular and useful message boards such as Roots Chat and mailing lists on particular surnames, regions, and other topics. These forums can be used to try to find relatives, request record lookups, obtain research advice, and much more. Many genealogists participate in loosely organized projects, both online and off. These collaborations take numerous forms. Some projects prepare name indexes for records, such as probate cases and publish the indexes, either online or off. These indexes can be used as finding aids to locate original records. Other projects transcribe or abstract records. Offering record lookups for particular geographic areas is another common service. Volunteers do record lookups or take photos in their home areas for researchers who are unable to travel. Those looking for a structured volunteer environment can join one of thousands of genealogical societies worldwide. Most societies have a unique area of focus, such as a particular surname, ethnicity, geographic area, or descendancy from participants in a given historical event. Genealogical societies are almost exclusively staffed by volunteers and may offer a broad range of services, including maintaining libraries for members' use, publishing newsletters, providing research assistance to the public offering classes or seminars, and organizing record preservation or transcription projects. Genealogy software is used to collect, store, sort, and display genealogical data. At a minimum, genealogy software accommodates basic information about individuals, including births, marriages, and deaths. Many programs allow for additional biographical information, including occupation, residence, and notes and most also offer a method for keeping track of the sources for each piece of evidence.
Charts Most programs can generate basic kinship charts and reports, allow for the import of digital photographs and the export of data in the GetCom format, short for genealogical data seal communication, so that data can be shared with those using other genealogy software. More advanced features include the ability to restrict the information that is shared, usually by removing information about living people out of privacy concerns, the import of sound files, the generation of family history books, web pages and other publications, the ability to handle same-sex marriages and children born out of wedlock, searching the Internet for data, and the provision of research guidance. Programs may be geared toward a specific religion, with fields relevant to that religion or to specific nationalities or ethnic groups, with source types relevant for those groups. Genealogists use a wide variety of records in their research. To effectively conduct genealogical research, it is important to understand how the records were created, what information is included in them, and how and where to access them. Records that are used in genealogy research include To keep track of their citizens Governments began keeping records of persons who were neither royalty nor nobility. In England and Germany, for example, such record keeping started with parish registers in the 16th century. As more of the population was recorded, there were sufficient records to follow a family. Major life events, such as births, marriages, and deaths, were often documented with a license, permit, or report. Genealogists locate these records in local, regional or national offices or archives and extract information about family relationships and recreate timelines of persons' lives. In China, India and other Asian countries, genealogy books are used to record the names, occupations, and other information about family members, with some books dating back hundreds or even thousands of years. In the eastern Indian state of Bihar, there is a written tradition of genealogical records among Mayfield Brahmins and Karnakayasthas called Penjis dating to the 12th century CE. Even today these records are consulted prior to marriages. In Ireland, genealogical records were recorded by professional families of century historians, until as late as the mid-17th century. Perhaps the most outstanding example of this genre is Laurna and Genealog slash The Great Book of Irish Genealogies, by Dub Halcock McThurbisai, D.1671, published in 2004. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS Church, has engaged in large-scale microfilming of records of genealogical value. Its family history library in Salt Lake City, Utah, houses over 2 million microfiche and microfilms of genealogically relevant material, which are also available for on-site research at over 4,500 family history centers worldwide. Family Search's website includes many resources for genealogists, a family tree database, historical records, digitized family history books, resources and indexing for African American genealogy such as slave and bank records, and a family history research wiki containing research guidance articles. Indexing is the process of transcribing parish records, city vital records, and other reports to a digital database for searching. Volunteers and professionals participate in the indexing process. Since 2006, the microfilm in the family search Granite Mountain Vault is in the process of being digitally scanned, available online, and eventually indexed. For example, after the 72 year legal limit for releasing personal information for the United States Census was reached in 2012, genealogical groups cooperated to index the 132 million residents registered in the 1940 United States Census. Between 2006 and 2012, the family search indexing effort produced more than 1 billion searchable records. Genealogists who seek to reconstruct the lives of each ancestor consider all historical information to be genealogical information. Traditionally, the basic information needed to ensure correct identification of each person are place names, occupations, family names, first names, and dates. However, modern genealogists greatly expand this list, recognizing the need to place this information in its historical context in order to properly evaluate genealogical evidence and distinguish between same-name individuals. A great deal of information is available for British ancestry with growing resources for other ethnic groups. Family names are simultaneously one of the most important pieces of genealogical information, and a source of significant confusion for researchers. In many cultures, the name of a person refers to the family to which he or she belongs. This is called the family name, surname, or last name. 
Patronymics are names that identify an individual based on the father's name. For example, Marga Olaf's daughter is Marga, daughter of Olaf, and Olaf Thorson is Olaf, son of Thor. Many cultures used patronymics before surnames were adopted or came into use. The Dutch in New York, for example, used the patronymic system of names until 1687 when the advent of English rule mandated surname usage. In Iceland, patronymics are used by a majority of the population. In Denmark and Norway, patronymics and farm names were generally in use through the 19th century and beyond, though surnames began to come into fashion toward the end of the 19th century in some parts of the country. Not until 1856 in Denmark and 1923 in Norway were there laws requiring surnames. The transmission of names across generations, marriages and other relationships, and immigration may cause difficulty in genealogical research. For instance, women in many cultures have routinely used their spouses' surnames. When a woman remarried, she may have changed her name and the names of her children, only her name, or changed no names. Her birth name, maiden name, may be reflected in her children's middle names, her own middle name, or dropped entirely. Children may sometimes assume step parent foster parent, or adoptive parent names. Because official records may reflect many kinds of surname change, without explaining the underlying reason for the change, the correct identification of a person recorded identified with more than one name is challenging. Immigrants to America often Americanize their names. Surname data may be found in trade directories, census returns, birth, death, and marriage records. Genealogical data regarding given names first names, is subject to many of the same problems as our family names and place names. Additionally, the use of nicknames is very common. For example, Beth, Lizzie or Betty are all common for Elizabeth, and Jack, John and Jonathan may be interchanged. Middle names provide additional information. Middle names may be inherited, follow naming customs, or be treated as part of the family name. For instance, in some Latin cultures, both the mother's family name and the father's family name are used by the children. Historically, naming traditions existed in some places and cultures. Even in areas that tended to use naming conventions, however, they were by no means universal. Families may have used them some of the time, among some of their children, or not at all. A pattern might also be broken to name a newborn of Tara recently deceased sibling, aunt or uncle. An example of a naming tradition from England, Scotland and Ireland Another example is in some areas of Germany, where siblings were given the same first name, often of a favorite saint or local nobility, but different second names by which they were known, roof name. If a child died, the next child of the same gender that was born may have been given Thessamy name. It is not uncommon that a list of a particular couple's children will show one or two names repeated. Personal names have periods of popularity so it is not uncommon to find many similarly named people in a generation, and even similarly named families, for example, William and Mary and their children David, Mary, and John. Many names may be identified strongly with a particular gender, for example, William for boys, and Mary for girls. Others may be ambiguous, for example, Lee, or have only slightly variant spellings based on gender, for example, Francis, usually female, and Francis, usually male. While the locations of ancestors' residences and life events are core elements of the genealogist's quest, they can often be confusing. Place names may be subject to variant spellings by partially literate scribes. Locations may have identical or very similar names. For example, the village name Brockton occurs six times in the border area between the English counties of Shropshire and Staffordshire. Shifts and political borders must also be understood. Parish, county, and national borders have frequently been modified. Old records may contain references to farms and villages that have ceased to exist. When working with older records from Poland, where borders and place names have changed frequently in past centuries, a source with maps and sample records such as a translation guide to 19th century Polish language civil registration documents can be invaluable. Available sources may include vital records, civil or church registration, censuses, and tax assessments. Oral tradition is also an important source, although it must be used with caution. When no source information is available for a location, circumstantial evidence may provide a probable answer based in a person's or a family's place of residence at the time of the event. Maps and gazetteers are important sources for understanding the places researched. They show the relationship of an area to neighboring communities and may be of help in understanding migration patterns. 
Family tree mapping using online mapping tools such as Google Earth, particularly when used with historical map overlays such as those from the David Rumsey Historical Map Collection, assist in the process of understanding the significance of geographical locations. It is wise to exercise extreme caution with dates. Dates are more difficult to recall years after an event, and are more easily mistranscribed than other types of genealogical data. Therefore, one should determine whether the date was recorded at the time of the event or at a later date. Dates of birth in vital records or civil registrations and in church records at baptism are generally accurate because they were usually recorded near the time of the event. Family Bibles are often a source for dates, but can be written from memory long after the event. When the same ink and handwriting is used for all entries, the dates were probably written at the same time and therefore will be less reliable since the earlier dates were probably recorded well after the event. The publication date of the Bible also provides a clue about when the dates were recorded since they could not have been recorded at any earlier date. People sometimes reduce their age on marriage, and those under full age may increase their age in order to marry or to join the armed forces. Census returns are notoriously unreliable for ages or for assuming an approximate death date. Ages over 15 in the 1841 census in the UK are rounded down to the next lower multiple of five years. Although baptismal dates are often used to approximate birth dates, some families waited years before baptizing children, and adult baptisms are the norm in some religions. Both birth and marriage dates may have been adjusted to cover for pre-wedding pregnancies. Calendar changes must also be considered. In 1752, England and her American colonies changed from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar. In the same year, the date the new year began was changed. Prior to 1752 it was 25th of March, this was changed to 1st of January. Many other European countries had already made the calendar changes before England had, sometimes centuries earlier. By 1751 there was an 11-day discrepancy between the date in England and the date in other European countries. For further detail on the changes involved in moving from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar, see, Gregorian calendar. The French Republican calendar A French Revolutionary calendar was a calendar proposed during the French Revolution, and used by the French government for about 12 years from late 1793 to 1805, and for 18 days in 1871 in Paris. Dates and official records at this time use the Revolutionary calendar and need translating into the Gregorian calendar for calculating ages etc. There are various websites which do this. Occupational information may be important to understanding an ancestor's life and for distinguishing two people with the same name. A person's occupation may have been related to his or her social status, political interest, and migration pattern. Since skill trades are often passed from father to son, occupation may also be indirect evidence of a family relationship. It is important to remember that a person may change occupations, and that titles change over time as well. Some workers no longer fit for their primary trade you often took less prestigious jobs later in life, while others moved upwards in prestige. Many unskilled ancestors had a variety of jobs depending on the season and local trade requirements. Census returns may contain some embellishment, for example, from laborer to mason, or from journeyman to master craftsman. Names for older unfamiliar local occupations may cause confusion if poorly legible. For example, an ostler, a keeper of horses, and a ostler, an innkeeper could easily be confused for one another. Likewise, descriptions of such occupations may also be problematic. The perplexing description ironer of rabbit burrows may turn out to describe an ironer, profession, in the Bristol district named rabbit burrows. Several trades have regionally preferred terms. For example, shoemaker and cordwainer have the same meaning. Finally, many apparently obscure jobs are part of a larger trade community such as watchmaking, framework knitting or gunmaking. Occupational data may be reported in occupational licenses, tax assessments, membership records of professional organizations, trade directories, census returns, and vital records, civil registration. Occupational dictionaries are available to explain many obscure and archaic trades. Information found in historical or genealogical sources can be unreliable and it is good practice to evaluate all sources with a critical eye. Factors influencing the reliability of genealogical information include, the knowledge of the informant, or writer, the bias and mental state of the informant or write, the passage of time and the potential for copying and compiling errors. The quality of census data has been of special interest to historians, who have investigated reliability issues. 
Records The informant is the individual who provided the recorded information. Genealogists must carefully consider who provided the information and what he or she knew. In many cases the informant is identified in the record itself. For example, a death certificate usually has two informants, a physician who provides information about the time and cause of death and a family member who provides the birth date, names of parents, etc. When the informant is not identified, one can sometimes deduce information about the identity of the person by careful examination of the source. One should first consider who was alive, and nearby, when the record was created. When the informant is also the person recording the information, the handwriting can be compared to other handwriting samples. When a source does not provide clues about the informant, genealogists should treat the source with caution. These sources can be useful if they can be compared with independent sources. For example, a census record by itself cannot be given much weight because the informant is unknown. However, when censuses for several years concur on a piece of information that would not likely be guessed by a neighbor, it is likely that the information in these censuses was provided by a family member or other informed person. On the other hand, information in a single census cannot be confirmed by information in an undocumented compiled genealogy since the genealogy may have used the census record as its source and might therefore be dependent on the same misinformed individual. Even individuals who had knowledge of the fact, sometimes intentionally or unintentionally provided false or misleading information. A person may have lied in order to obtain a government benefit, such as a military pension, avoid taxation, or cover up an embarrassing situation, such as existence of a non-marital child. A person with a distressed state of mind may not be able to accurately recall information. Many genealogical records were recorded at the time of a loved one's death, and so genealogists should consider the effect that grief may have had on the informant of these records. The passage of time often affects a person's ability to recall information. Therefore, as a general rule, data recorded soon after the event is usually more reliably than data recorded many years later. However, some types of data are more difficult to recall after many years than others. One type especially prone to recollection errors is dates. Also the ability to recall is affected by the significance that the event had to the individual. These values may have been affected by cultural or individual preferences. Genealogists must consider the effects that copying and compiling errors may have had on the information in a source. For this reason, sources are generally categorized in two categories, original and derivative. An original source is one that is not based on another source. A derivative source is information taken from another source. This distinction is important because each time a source is copied, information about the record may be lost and errors may result from the copyist misreading, mistyping, or miswriting the information. Genealogists should consider the number of times information has been copied and the types of derivation a piece of information has undergone. The types of derivatives include photocopies, transcriptions, abstracts, translations, extractions, and compilations. In addition to copying errors, compiled sources, such as published genealogies and online pedigree databases, are susceptible to misidentification errors and incorrect conclusions based on circumstantial evidence. Identity errors usually occur when two or more individuals are assumed to be the same person. Circumstantial or indirect evidence does not explicitly answer a genealogical question, but either may be used with other sources to answer the question, suggest a probable answer, or eliminate certain possibilities. Compilers sometimes draw hasty conclusions from circumstantial evidence without sufficiently examining all available sources, without properly understanding the evidence, and without appropriately indicating the level of uncertainty. In genealogical research, information can be obtained from primary or secondary sources. Primary sources are records that were made at the time of the event, for example a death certificate would be a primary source for a person's death date and place. Secondary sources are records that are made days, weeks, months, or even years after an event. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.